Hello, VC. So, <clears throat> something a little bit uh, different today, or I don't know. Anyways, uh, the background for this uh, video that will be, I promise, shorter than the previous ones <laughs> will be this. As you can hear, this is a dub early version of uh, Somebody to Love Tonight, Patrick Coley, who did this amazing mix that most people know without knowing him of Donna Summer's um, biggest hit. <laughs> um, while everyone thinks about George Moroder, uh, George Moroder, that should give some credit to Patrick Coley. This is um, a compilation of uh, his soundtracks for uh, gay porn movies from the late 70s, early 80s, I believe. Until uh, this compilation, there's very good tracks. But it's quite diverse. Anyways, yes, I have my hair, hair uh, not tied up. Uh, why is that? Hmm, I wonder. Well, I, I noticed that a lot of the guys and girls I'm interested in uh, in the VC. I mean, their videos, obviously, are. Uh, there's a lot of metalheads, hard rock. Um, for me, hard rock and metal were always the devil. I mean, the music tries its best to be the devil. For me, it was the devil. I, I, I instinctively, as a child, hated it. Not because it scared me, but because I found it so corny and so cheesy. Um, but then again, I was a kid in the 80s. The 80s is uh, the area of uh, hair metal and all this leather and I don't know. This sound is so corny when we had hip hop coming uh, around, techno and all that. Like, what the fuck is this? Um, I guess later on I, I understood uh, when I heard and read about the whole disco sucks movement, which was basically the neoliberals in uh, the US who lobbied the radio stations to stop playing disco because uh, they were afraid of disco. Disco was welcoming to every race, every age, every sexuality. That's not good for the neoliberals. Let's have some macho males with leather, tight leather, being alpha males, even if <laughs> that was so. <laughs> So borderline, uh, I don't know, you know what I mean. Anyways, um, yeah, so I guess like metal and the hard rock was out of the question for me. And yet I find myself always uh, attracted to, to a cert, certain type of people who are into that kind of music for some reason, uh, attracted at least intellectually. Um, it depends on what kind of metal, mind you. Like if you're like, a, I don't know, uh, if your musical world starts from, from Sabbath and ends with Metallica, or at best, I don't know, Sano, I guess the conversation will be in general nice, but somewhat limited. Uh, probably not, <laughs> probably, we'll, we'll, we'll probably find something to talk about anyways. Um, but I thought I'd share 10 records that have always been 10 records I really love uh, from various times in music history that are coming from hard rock, heavy rock, metal uh, and affiliated basically hard rock records that talks to someone who enjoys disco, house, dub, noise, avant-garde, free jazz, folk, I don't know, Just, yeah, uh, <laughs> so, so let's start, let's start with something quite odd, here are the Barons, small town revival, the Barons were, I think they did this album in a couple of uh, seven inches, 
This is kind of a private press. As you can see, this is a generic artwork, generic type um, typography. Um, this is from 76. And I don't remember how I found it, but like, it was so odd that a friend of mine who's a journalist, um, who I introduced to this record, wrote a fake biography, graphic novel, about uh, the origin of this band and me introducing him to it. <laughs> and it was actually published. It's alright, but um, this is like heavy blues, heavy rock, but there's one track on it that we'll listen to now. Basically, in my twisted mind, this is kind of like if Stairway to Heaven had been produced by Brian Eno. Um, Brian Eno, 70s Brian Eno. Because you get like this, these synthesizers. This is, all, this is so weird. But yeah, this is. Um, probably what attracts me to it. Um, the dub aspect of it, the electronic side of things, the playing that is trying to be something more than just heavy blues. And, um, and voila, that was a little heavy metal, heavy rock <laughs> record that speaks to this non-heavy guy. Something more heavy now.
this is Ministry. Uh, Ministry, we started out as uh, a band that sounded much like Depeche Mode. Um, but at the turn of the 80s, something happened and Al Jorgensen became this weirdo. He probably was all along, but coming from like synth pop to industrial and to this Ooh, I love this, I really love this, uh, love this back then when it came out in 92, 93, I'm not sure, and um, for me this is psychedelic, it's completely psychedelic, but somehow if you do for this in a record shop nowadays, you will find it most of the time in the metal section, and uh, well, Good thing for the metalheads, some outside influence. <laughs> so next, something. Um, um, we're still in America with a record that I guess back when it was released, you wouldn't have called it metal or hard rock. But uh, over the years, it has become part of the section. Insane is probably one of the bands I've saw live the most uh, in the early 90s, uh, at least six times, and a couple of times later on when they became more bluesy, heavy blues, heavy rock. Um, they started out as a noise punk rock grunge band or something from New York, and this is their first proper album in, in my opinion. There is a, two albums before that, but it's mostly compilations of. Uh, singles. I had a t-shirt of this <laughs> that of course uh, my parents decided like oh this got destroyed in the washing machine. Too bad for you. Um, anyways, Total Destruction, the track called uh, Straight. I still really like this. Um, something else than um, Oh, let's uh, go for this. came out on Earache, probably the best metal label ever in Martinian. Um, all is a very strange band because as you can hear there's a very proggy sound aesthetic. And yet it's like grindcore Crash and the uh, prog, but in a very plastic way. Um, but I don't say that in a, um, in a negative way. There is like a very, very odd um, aesthetic 
Their album that came after this one, Onion City, unfortunately, is even better, much more accomplished. It is kind of reminding you of a mixture of the perfect mix of Whole Queen and Napalm Death. Uh, and maybe a little bit of Anal Count. Um, anyways, this is a, this is a great album that deserves a wider recognition, uh, in my opinion, in the metal world. But what might you argue? Next, something also quite on the fringe of things. God Machine, a British band uh, that only released two, album, um, two albums on Fiction Records, the Cure's label. Um, so they're kind of on the alternative side of things, but they really had a distinctive metal guitar sound, which was why I was always unsure about them, actually. This is a cover of KLF's What Time Is Love. So it's you still got their sound, but it's a bit different. But their album... Um, from 92, I believe, uh, is a classic. Um, it's, it's very odd, it's very a beast of its own, and I highly suggest you check it out. Uh, it's kind of a mixture of, I don't know, of Dead Can Dance and, um, and Godflesh. But as we're talking about Godflesh, I believe it's... Uh, time to listen to Godflesh, isn't it? Mm, here it is. For those who don't know what Godflesh is, um, is it the right side? Let's see. I'm not sure. No, it's not. Godflesh is Justin Broderick's band. Justin Broderick uh, was the guitar guitarist leader of Nathan Death. And this is uh, their third album, I believe. Pure. Godflesh is a band that uh, existed up until the late 90s, early 2000s, and that resurfaces every now and then because uh, when they fuck up and uh, don't think they can go on, a few years later there is still demand for them, festivals and such. 
Um, this is quite a unique band, as you can hear, bass, guitar, singing and drum machine. It's not always like that, sometimes you have a drummer, but I saw them live a few times in that configuration, just a tape recorder for the drums, bass, guitar, most intense gigs ever. Like, the kind of gigs you wonder sometimes, would I survive it? Um, <laughs> because of the intensity. Um, so th this is from 92, I believe. Um, also a Birmingham uh, connection. Birmingham being probably <laughs> my favorite city for uh, British music, at least rock. And, um, well, here's some metal for people who don't like metal. Next, um, something a bit different. We'll go back to the 70s, um, to a band that most of you know very well. Um, it's a band that is not really famous for this album, but let's check it out. This song is pretty special because it's called Black Blade. The text was written by um, Michael Moorcock, the fantasy writer. And it's about, basically it's a, a nod to his Elric the Necromancer the character, the Albanian prince, who's got the demon sword. So basically the first half of the song you get a pretty straight heavy metal, heavy rock uh, song. And now, yeah, the first part is basically the, the holder of the, the sword who is talking about his relationship to his sword and now you get the sword, the demon sword singing through the vocoder so basically vocoder, bass and synthesizer how cool is that? Um, yeah, it's on this album called Cultusaurus Erectus I never see this one mentioned that much, uh, and it's a shame because uh, lots of uh, lots of interesting stuff on this uh, that might appeal to people who are not metalheads. Let's go back to. Let's go back to England, uh, but from another time. Well, <laughs> Lois Circle is not that far away from that. Um, Side. Sorry, VC. This is Fudge Tunnel, Alex Newport's band most famous for um, starting the project Nail Bomb with uh, someone from Sepultura, if I remember correctly. But this is before. This is uh, when they were still in England, on Eraic actually.
and um, we'll conclude this heavy rock journey with uh, finally something more recent. Um, Lingua ignota. A domestic violence survivor. This is her first album. This is her second one that came out last year, I believe. Absolutely amazing and essential. But the first one is as good, in my opinion. Lingua Ignota is, uh, has uh, sung for a few metal bands and her own project, as you'll see, is kind of in between neoclassical noise, metal, uh, doom, I don't know how to describe it, but it's... Uh, I'm, I'm sure she's getting a lot of bullshit as a woman in the, in the metal world, but um, maybe she should be embraced by another scene then. As you can see. That's not the track I wanted to play. There you go. of Diamond Agalas, this won't be as surprising, but it's, it's quite different to be honest, because Diamond Agalas comes, doesn't come at all from a metal perspective. This obviously is using many tropes of, uh, of metal, but pushing them in a direction that was not meant for it. and. Uh, Let's be thankful for that. On that note, we see. Uh, I'll, I'll beat my farewell for today. Huh? I hope you're all good. I uh, hope uh, <laughs> the messiness of this video will uh, be acceptable and I'll uh, get back to you with something uh, quite different. Bye. Or not different. Now I'm off to the bathroom. <laughs>